So we've spent some time talking about why. Why disability ministry? Why incorporate this population? What use is it? Now let's talk about who. What I mean by who is we're going to try to get a better sense of this population that we label disabled, and we have to be careful with labels because they often imply many things that may not be true. It is necessary if we look at statistics, we have to define what disability is. This is probably my least favorite part of the lecture, but it is necessary. Disability is actually a very difficult term to define. Now, this definition that I'm going to put out is lengthy, and the reason I chose it <clears throat> is because of that fact. If you'd like a copy of the actual statistics I'm using, you can go to disabilitystatistics.org. Once again, disabilitystatistics.org. This is from Cornell University. It's the 2007 Disability Status Report that they just put out. Cornell is kind of becoming a leader in disability stats. And in this statistics book, they use the American Community Survey which is a survey that collected information about disabled across the country. Now they base the answer of what is disability to the answer to three questions. And please don't worry about writing these down. If you want it, just go to disability statistics. You get it there, because I'm going to fly through this, OK? All right, does this person have any of the following long-lasting conditions, blindness, deafness, or severe vision or hearing impairment? This would be considered sensory disability. If you're just die hard to take notes, just type sensory disability, OK? Continuing question one, does this person have a condition that substantially limits one or more basic physical activities? And they list them there. This would be categorized as a physical disability. So we have sensory, we have physical. Moving on to question two, because of a physical, mental, or emotional conditioning, condition lasting six months or more, does this person have any difficulty in doing any of the following? Learning, remembering, or concentrating. Mental disability. Once again, if you're taking notes, just key, in, key into the disabilities. So far, we have sensory, physical, and mental. The bottom one, we have self-care disability. This includes dressing, bathing, getting around inside the home. Because of physical, mental, or emotional condition lasting six months or more, does this person have any difficulty doing any of the following activities? Going outside the home alone to shop or visit. They actually call this a go-outside-home disability. Working at a job or business, this would be an employment disability. Okay, now we've said all that. You are characterized, you wear the label of disabled if he or she or a proxy respondent, which would be one who represents the disabled individual, answers affirmatively for one or more of those six categories. Sensory, physical, mental, self-care, go outside, or employment disability. Now, here's the question. Show of hands. Pop quiz. Based on this definition of disability, roughly how many disabled do you think live in the United States and are both over the age of five and non-institutionalized? Now this is the parameter of the study. It only looked at this population. So bear in mind, it doesn't count individuals under the age of five. It does not include those in nursing homes. It does not include those that we think of in facilities. Okay, so who raises their hand that this population in the United States, not global, is under 10 million? Okay, 10 to 15 million. Okay, 15 to 20 million. Over 20 million. The correct answer is 41.3 million. Let that number sink in. Dallas, Texas is approximately 2 million people. In our country, just in our borders, there is 41.3 million people that fall in this diagnosis, or fall under this definition, excuse me, that are non-institutionalized, that are living at home, and are over the age of five. <clears throat> in other words, approximately 41.3 million of roughly 277 million people in our country. Slightly less than one in seven. In southern states, one in five. So in our own backyard, one in five individuals in our community has a functional disability. Are you surprised? More realistically, the National Organization on Disability, you can go to nod.org, this is a government-funded institution, reports that there are 54 million Americans affected by disability. 
54 million. U.S. prevalence in 2007. Look at these statistics. Y'all were taught observation in Bible study methods. Notice a trend. As age goes up, what happens to the prevalence? It increases. Realize, if you're 75 and over, it's a one in two chance, according to these statistics, that you'll be disabled. If you're over 65 to 74, it's almost 30% going all the way down to ages 5 to 15, which is roughly 1 in 12. Now, if you happen to find a church, and there are few, but if you happen to find a church that has a disability ministry, which group do they typically cater to? Children. Now, hear me clearly. Hear me very clearly. I am not putting down the importance of disability ministry to children and of families with disabled children. That is just a starting point, though. The majority of the disabled population is over the age of 18. Of the six types of disability, physical disability has the highest prevalence of 9.4%. Thoughts to consider. Disability is often viewed as an abnormality, but what do the statistics suggest? Is it really a normality? Is it really normal to have a disability? I mean, after all, it's one in five. Stephanie Hubach, <clears throat> I think, did a wonderful job in this book that you'll read. By the way, she is a mother of a child with Down syndrome, and that's one of the reasons I chose this book. You need to hear from her perspective what disability ministry means to her and what she thinks it can be. But in this first chapter, she talks about Disability being a normality in an abnormal world. To help draw this point out, since I'm a visual learner, I kind of have to use the board just to see things better. Can y'all see that okay? And I'm going to try to quickly go through this because we are running close to, well, a little bit behind, but not too bad. What I'm going to draw on this board is two trees. How many of you know that trees play a prominent place in Scripture? Excuse my trees, they're not very pretty. Okay, we read of one tree in Genesis 2 9. Tree of life, also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We read, excuse me for the uh, overhead here. We read another tree in Revelation 22.2. Once again, the tree of life. So quite literally, we live in a time between the trees. Okay, some of you probably have heard that analogy before. Now, in this garden, the Garden of Eden, disability is an abnormality because it doesn't exist. In this location, the eternal kingdom, disability, once again, is an abnormality. Why? It doesn't exist. But let's look between the trees. When does disability become a normality? With the fall. Now, progressing forward, if you claim a prosperity gospel, where does disability once again become an abnormality? After all, Christ suffered for you so you don't have to suffer. God wants what's best for you. He wants you to have health. He wants you to have wealth. Notice how if you put the marker here, how it affects your theology. What if someone with a disability comes in your church? What if they can't be healed? What if they don't fit in? Do they stay long? What if some of the members of that church later in life become sick and ill and die a terrible death? I think biblically the marker actually is here. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, we read that God will wipe away every tear. 
we read that suffering and death and grief will be no more. As we live between the trees, between these two markers, disability is in fact a normality. Often my patients, one of the first things they say when I try to work with them is I want to be normal again. Not realizing really how normal they are. So if disability is a normality, and we already briefly talked about children's special needs ministry. <clears throat> I mentioned about labels, being careful about labels. Special needs. These individuals are special and they're needy. <laughs> Be careful in the power of labels. Now, if you were a 55-year-old gentleman who had a stroke, who lost his ability to speak, could understand but couldn't speak, and you showed up at a church and the usher said, ah, the special needs ministry down the hall to the left, would you come back? Children's special needs ministry is often the focus, but disability ministry needs to go much further. Other statistics to consider, 53%, excuse my voice, <clears throat> of individuals with a disability do not attend a local church in any form. One in two. Now remember, this is 41.3, and actually according to the National Organization on Disability, 54 million people, half of which don't even make the effort. And these individuals, that's often one of the reasons. But if they're motivated, they'll get there. They get to their doctor's appointments. Many of them will get there if they're motivated. Less than 15% of American churches have an intentional program or service to individuals with disabilities. Other st statistics to consider. Two in every seven American families have a family member with a disability. Uh, let that sink in. Two in seven families. Also realize this. If a family has a disabled family member that the church doesn't cater to or help, the family doesn't come. If you don't minister to the needs of the disabled, whatever those needs may be, you're missing a whole family. 85% of marriages end in divorce when a child with disability is present. Now, some of you might look at that and think, how could that be? Well, think about it. If you have a disabled child, chances are you don't like public places. If you have a disabled child, it's hard to find a babysitter. If you have a disabled child, it's just you and typically and your husband. It's a very stressful situation with no church support. And really, I, I could only say so much about this, but I think what would help you to see this better is a family that I'd like you to meet called the Sabells. 